Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be a uh, tutorial or just an installation video for No Trigger's 30 row oil cooler kit. I've been having just a ton of issues getting mine to fit, but it's not necessarily his fault or an issue with the kit. It is just because I have a Nismo. If you don't have a Nismo, this should take you like 30 to, 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour to install. But since I didn't have any other Nismo owners who have installed it to like ask for help, this has taken me quite a while. So what you're gonna do if you don't have a Nismo is when they when the um, oil cooler arrives, it will have this L bracket on the bottom already, L shaped like that. It'll either look like this or like that. I don't really remember. But what you're gonna do is if you want to mount it in this location you could mount it over there but i didn't upgrade the power steering so that's why i'm on this side so back to this if you don't have a non nis or if you don't have a nismo you won't have the nismo damper bar which normally <clears throat> on the nismos uh, the damper it's just like that and I know it's reversed right now I'll get to that later but this is why it won't fit the oil cooler won't fit if you have an ISMO and so there we go so the cooler would be mounted just like this and this is like before I, I drilled these two holes and so what I did was I took my ruler and he gives you the hardware for these also i'm just not sure where it is at the moment and so i measured out where i use this as my point of reference right there and then i measured the the hole would be at like 2.9 inches so yeah right around there if you can see right around 2.9 inches and then the other hole is around like 8.7 or 8.65. And so then I put my ruler on the L bracket, <clears throat> lined it up and made a mark where it should have been. It's the mark on the left, not the one right under the three. So you see, see my two, two marks on the bottom, it's the one on the left. Um, and then my like 8.6 marker is like right around there. And I believe I used a, I think I started with a, oh, I don't even remember. Get this shit open. I started with a 15 64ths, but I ended up needing a quarter inch to get his hardware in. And literally, like just like that, if, if you don't have a Nismo, all you do is you'll put the... Hold up, I gotta find the hardware and then I'll continue this. Okay, so I found the hardware. There'll be six bolts in total. Four of them will look like this, just a smaller washer and the nut. And two of them will have a larger washer, a smaller washer and a nut. The bolts with just one washer are what attaches the cooler to the L bracket. I've removed them, obviously, and so what you would do, this is for a non-Nismo, is let's just assume this cooler is still on the L bracket wherever I placed it, right here. So you would take the, you would take the, the bolt with both washers on it, unscrew this, and take the small washer off, if I can get it off. And so then you would put it in here then you would, and I've already drilled out these holes. It doesn't come like that. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but. Okay, so there we go. And how I, how I figured out where those holes would need to be is I took a ruler and set it there and then looked at where the holes were and just put a mark so you can see i believe the first one was like 2.9 inches when you align it with this section 
Another one is like 8.65 or something like that. And so then you would take the smaller washer, put it on there and then screw the nut on. And basically you'd be good to go as far as, far as mounting goes. And that is for the non Nismo one. If you have a Nismo, like I might've said in the previous clip, I don't really remember now, what you'll have is these two holes for the Nismo damper, which is right here. And normally how it looks is it has the bulky side of it. As you can see, it's on the right. But as you can tell, that is not how it is looking right now. What I had to do is release these bolts and those bolts and flip the thing. There won't be any performance differences. I've already looked into this. And so now I'm going to mount it like that. What I'm gonna do is I took the damper out and I'm going to reverse these, whatever you call it, holders. They're two 14 uh, mil nuts. So I just used two wrenches and um, pulled opposite ways. There's a rough mock-up. But the issue is that I still have the, the dampers right above the L bracket. So there are two options you have now. You can either have the oil cooler behind this damper, or you can have it in front of the damper. But my issue is that I'm running an aftermarket CSF, I believe it's CSF radiator. It was installed before I bought the car. And so I don't have very much room. Like no trigger said I could just flip this L bracket so that it would be like this. Just, just assume I had, had it drilled properly. Um, I could flip the L bracket and then the oil cooler would mount there. I'd just have to drill into the plastic. But my issue is that I still can't clear it like that. And so what I'm gonna do is mount the cooler without, I'm not gonna use the bracket at all. I'm going to mount the cooler up on this plastic piece. And what I bought was some self-drilling screws. I'm gonna first drill a pilot hole with like a really small drill bit, just to give these like a little starting area. And the other issue is I, I realized this last night, if I take off the damper, I don't know if this is Nismo only or if it's on all Z's. I, I watched some other installation videos and it was on some cars and wasn't on others. So I really don't know what it's for. It, to me, it doesn't look OEM, like just has some little nuts drilled in there. But anyways, the issue I have now is that this fitting right here for the oil cooler, when it's sitting, when the cooler is sitting here, that line is hitting this black piece. So what I'm gonna have to do is probably dremel that out so that this can get clearance. Otherwise, uh, I don't know, maybe I could bend it out. I don't really wanna remove it because it's probably there for a reason. These are riveted in, so I know if I remove them, it's gonna be hard for me to, I mean, I don't have a rivet gun and I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't have enough space to get a hammer in there and smack a new one down. So I'm most likely just gonna bend this or dremel it out and I'll let y'all know what I do. All right, guys, so I still don't have any lines connected and I haven't bent that metal piece yet, but I wanted to do a test fit to make sure before I did everything. So this is the Nismo damper flipped. I'll have the torque specs on these either later in the video or in the description. The ones for this, this, and something else, I don't remember. But right now, as you can see, flipped the sides and I just put one bolt in. Um, I can't push these anymore, so I'm sure that's how it's gonna be. It is slightly, just slightly brushing my uh, power steering cooler. Not really too concerned. I'll probably bend those in a second or something to get it to not touch. But this is without the line installed. I have the cooler mounted. It is a very tight fit, but it is not touching. If I push it, 
this is also aligned right here. So I'm going to be drilling the pilot holes right in there before using the uh, self-tapping screw and a rubber washer to eliminate vibration. This is what I'm using. And so and that is the spec for it. Got those at uh, Lowe's, I believe. Okay, so back to this. Both of these are pushed. Th this, is, this is not moving when it's fully installed, but I'm gonna push the cooler back until it hits the radiator now. Um, it's basically already about to hit it. Um, and so now I'll pull it forward until it hits the cooler. I don't know if you can hear it there, but that is as far as it'll go in terms of clearance from the radiator. But right now it is hitting the damper. So I'm just gonna move it back a tiny little bit so it's in the middle. So I, I have a bit of space between the damper. I'll, I'll, I'll figure this out. I might put some tape on the back of this, something just to prevent metal on metal rubbing, but I'm pretty sure that's how it's gonna be. And if y'all can see, I don't know, I mean, it's just all black, so it's kind of hard to tell, but that is what the fitting is running into, that black piece. So, Okay, so what we're gonna do now is this piece is way too strong to just bend, so we're gonna dremel it along, kind of like where that green tape is, that's my line reference. But the issue is that we can only get so far before we have the intake um, blocking it in the way. This is the Z1 two and a half inch intake. So my solution was gonna be to dremel the top and then go in from the bottom with this to cut out the rest of it. I don't know if y'all can see, but I, here, I'll get the uh, flashlight out. But now I was considering just using this the whole time, but now that I've just broken that, I probably will have to use the grinder or whatever you call this the whole time. And so in order to get a straight line on my cut of the little black piece, what I decided to do is, I don't know how well y'all can see on camera. Oh yeah, you can see right there, there's a black line. What I did is I put the ruler, put the ruler right here the ruler right there and then just aligned it on the left with the black piece and then sharpied a black line across the whole thing so that when I'm looking at it from above I can see exactly where to get a straight cut from and how I got an angle was I peeked through there to trace the line um, this little back section over here is gonna be kind of hard to cut but um, I'm not realizing I probably should have made a line down below too, but oh well, I'll figure that out. Um, and yeah, just make sure not to cut your wiring harness. I probably won't record me cutting this because I'll be more focused on doing it. Um, but yeah, I will record what happens after. Okay, so this is where I'm at right now. I didn't use the grinder because this thing, how it works, it goes, uh, where's the trigger? It goes like that up and down. And so this piece, like when I was starting, trying to like start drilling, it was just like shooting this up and down a ton. So I started using the Dremel, which has actually worked pretty well. I put the tape there to just help me see the line. It's not perfect, but it'll help me a bit. And so now I'm just going to continue dremeling. Okay, guys, so I just finished up the dremel job, which was much harder than I expected. Not because the job was hard. It's because my dremel broke during it. Not because of this specific, like, job. It's just because it was too old. And so I'm pretty happy with it. I do have clearance. I wasn't able to... Or basically, I started, like, dremeling right here. I didn't actually start at the edge because I figured half of it would, like, flop down, which is sort of what happened. I got, like, 90% of the thing cut, except for both of the edges. And so at the moment, I just have it bent down. Um, I could flex it back and forth 
so like up and down until it finally did snap. But I'm not really concerned enough with it. Um, with anything, or if anything, I'm just gonna wrap this side in tape so that it doesn't wear down the uh, braided lines, just for like assurance. But now I'm going to be drilling the pilot holes. I'm going I'm to like mock mount it up right now. And I have that over my power steering cooler so it doesn't potentially snag on the braided lines. But as I said, I'm going to mock this up right now and then run my lines and see how it looks. And I'll show you all then. Okay, so for this next step, it's going to be a bit hard to see. But this is exactly where the oil filter goes. What you're going to want to do... I'm not sure what this line is because it's not in his installation video, but I'm just gonna push that out of the way. And then you're gonna put, this is the sandwich plate or adapter plate, and then you'll have this gold piece or whatever. What is What it's gonna do, here I'll re remove it, is it will essentially screw to the old, it's just gonna act like how the old um, oil filter did. It's gonna screw into here. Obviously I'm not gonna, do that but what I am going to do is put the new sandwich plate on and it's gonna be kind of hard to do one-handed so I might just put the camera down but you're gonna push that in there and then make sure you're not cross threading like cross threading take your time like I can see it going smoothly right now I guess it's because I've threaded it a couple times and I know y'all can't see too much I'll try and adjust the exposure but it is screwing in right now. Yeah, I got it correctly. So that's just hand tight now. Remember to make sure your oil uh, drain plug is in. Ew. Uh, ew, nasty. <laughs> um, and then you're gonna take a one inch socket, if I can find it. So you're gonna need a one inch socket and then just tighten that on in there. I basically have no room and I'm gonna have to put the camera down now, but I'm just gonna tighten that on there. Um, not crazy tight, but just tight enough, you know, there's no kind of specific judge, judge it how you should. I'm going to uh, readjust this so that these lines are pointing, or like these two fittings are pointing more like towards this area instead of here just so it's easier for the lines to bend around to the cooler when it's mounted on the front of the car. But, yeah. All right, so this is a couple hours later. I had to go do some stuff, but I just test fitted the cooler. I test fitted the lines and I test fitted the damper. And so now I just, when I was fitting the cooler, I marked where it fit perfectly. And so then that is where I'm gonna start my pilot hole in there. And then I'm gonna follow it up with the self drilling screws. But in order to just support the uh, self drilling, I'm gonna tap these first. And I'm using a 5 64th bit for the pilot hole. So I just finished drilling the four pilot holes with the uh, 5 64th bit, I believe. Uh, something like that. I said it in the last clip. Uh, that went honestly better than I expected. Now I'm going to install the oil cooler and drill in the self-tapping screws. And also in order to give my, my drill more space, I removed this 10 mil, which is responsible for this bracket and just pushed it to the side a bit but it'll go right back in place when I put the nut on. Okay, so an update on the screws. I, after drilling the pilot holes, I used these with a rubber washer on them. I probably already said that, but the washer was to dissipate the pressure and just because why not? And if they're all in the rubber to reduce possible vibrations. Um, I've got three out of the four done. It's just such a pain because I can't get a drill in there. So I have to take the socket and just 
just it one by one by one by one by one. It's just so annoying. But after that, I'll be lining up the um, oil lines and wire or wrapping them or wiring wiring them down here. I might do a uh, I might do a windshield washer fluid delete since I don't ever ever use it. But not quite sure yet because I want to be able to drive the car without the bumper on it. But at the moment, the lines hang way too low for me to be comfortable doing that. And if I was able to route them through here and like up through this kind of area, that would be much better than having them wire or having them run down in front of the power steering cooler and down that way. But I'll figure it out. So as you saw in the previous clips, I've got this mounted. It's pretty sturdy. Um, honestly, it's a lot sturdier than I was expecting. But I, this is how I currently have my line set up. I might have said it. This is I've been recording this over a couple of days, so I don't really remember what I have said and haven't said. So I'm considering deleting my uh, windshield washer fluid reservoir because I just don't use it. And then I would feed the lines kind of up through this hole or just in this general area. But at the moment, they're just kind of rubbing on the power steering lines. As I said before, the Nismo dampers flipped. Last night, I put Teflon tape on the threads, as you can see there. It's the white stuff. It's just a uh, kind of a, I don't know, it's used for plumbing. It's just a security measure in case of a leak. It's kind of helps it. I haven't tightened this down, and I don't know if there is some kind of a torque spec for it, but I will get to that in a bit. In addition to that, I need to tighten these down up top, and most likely, I'm just going to be zip-tying these lines together just so I can get them as far off the ground as I can. Because Sometimes I'll drive without a front bumper, and I don't want those scraping because I'm, I'm pretty low, uh, lower than I'd like to be. And I also forgot to switch out the O-ring on the oil drain plug. I just replaced the copper O-ring. As far as I know, this is the correct orientation because this is how it looked when I took it off. As you can see, like the, the darker inner circle kind of matches that one. I don't know how to describe it, but just gonna put that back on to shit it dripped this whole time it didn't drip till just now that's annoying um so i'm gonna get a paper towel and then wipe that up tighten the lines put the air filters on and start the car all right guys so i was basically done with the entire job and i just realized that the o-ring on the new oil filter fell out. So I've already got my lines fitted, tightened super hard and the oil filters on and I cannot get it off with the, my strap wrench. I don't have enough room. So I have to undo everything to put the O-ring on re-teflon tape these lines and then reinstall the oil filter so